Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're going through the book of Genesis, verse by verse, and we come today to Genesis 28, verse 1. And remember, you can study the whole Bible with me, any book of the Bible, any chapter of the Bible, any section, simply by going to the Scripture Verse by Verse website, which is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. And then you choose the series. There are four series going through the Bible, verse by verse. And then choose the book, the chapter, the section, click and listen. And as always, remember, you just need to bring your Bible to thebibleversebyverse.com. And by the way, that's all you're going to find there. Nothing else, just the Word of God taught from Genesis through Revelation. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. No one should think that Isaac was being arrogant by saying this concerning the women in Canaan. It's true. He said, "Don't you're not going to marry one of them women. None of these Canaanite women. No, sir. And I suppose if the Canaanites overheard this conversation, they would think that Isaac thought that he was too good for them. But the problem and the issue The real issue was submission and obedience to God and faith in the one true God. And God has made it clear that a believer should not marry an unbeliever. I don't try to nitpick. I never did try to nitpick when it came to marrying people. Um, Well, trying to figure out if they're going to get along. (laughs) How, How arrogant can you be to try to figure that out? Or to, to suggest that you know how to figure that out as a pastor. Well, I'm not going to marry these two people. They're both Christians. They say they're in love, and but I don't think they're compatible. You know, something like that. I heard one man say, I wouldn't want to marry a black woman and a white woman. Oh, that was 30 years ago. Uh, you're going to have too many problems. I'm just not going to do it. doesn't matter if you're Christians or not. <laughs> how stupid. Number one, why don't you just stick to what the Bible says? And that's what I did. When it came to marrying people, there's one prerequisite laid out in Scripture, period. Both have to be believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's not a matter of arrogance with Isaac. It's a matter of obedience to God. Same with Jacob. You can't marry somebody that doesn't believe in the Lord. Two. Arise, Isaac said, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from there of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. And this command was probably actually a relief to Jacob. I mean, it's going to be a 500-mile walk or maybe a ride on the back of a camel or something. So that's not much fun. But at the same time, he just has an out. He's got a way to escape his brother Esau, who planned on murdering him because he stole his birthright. So as I said, this command probably was a relief to Jacob because Jacob knows that his brother Esau is out to kill him. This command to go 500 miles away and then find a wife came at a perfect time as far as Jacob is concerned. Three. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people and give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee and thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a sojourner which God gave unto Abraham. So Isaac 
had tried to give this messianic blessing, remember, to Esau. Going against the revealed will of God, he knew it. He was willfully rebelling against God's will, which was for Isaac or for Jacob to have it. And Isaac, no, nope, his favorite was Esau, so he's going to give it to him. Eh, who cares what God thinks? I'm going to give it to him. And the only reason he gave it to Jacob is because Jacob deceived his father into thinking that he was Esau. Remember, Isaac was blind. So he gave it to Jacob by mistake. And here Isaac repeats the blessing. This time, though, he gives it to Jacob on person, on purpose, I should say. 25, or 5. <clears throat> and Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padan Aram unto Laban, son of Bethuel the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. Now remember, remember? When we were introduced to Laban a few messages back, when Abraham sent his servant to find a wife for Isaac, he found Rebekah, sure enough. And he also found her brother, Laban. And I think I mentioned at that time that, that Laban had dollar signs in his eyes. He was greedy. He was materialistic. So Jacob travels 500 miles to visit Uncle Laban and to look for a wife. Six, when Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padan Aram to take himself a wife from there, and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge saying, thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Well, at last, Esau is kind of thinking about some stuff that his dad might like. Esau had already grieved his parents, we saw that earlier, by marrying a couple of those Canaanite women that Isaac despised. So did Rachel. So, I, you know, Esau had already married a couple of them, no account, God-hating heathens. But he, over, he overheard what Isaac said to his brother Jacob. So you got to get out of here and get a wife from up north because you're going to come marry one of these heathens. Yeah. Esau heard that. So look at verse 7. And that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Padanaram. So Esau knew that his brother Jacob was pleasing to their parents by looking for a believer to marry. And of course, to do that, you got to go up north 500 miles away. But he was going to do it because it pleased his mom and dad. And Esau knew that. So, verse 8. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac, his father, then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebajoth, to be his wife. So get the picture here. In, in sort of a twisted, unbiblical way, Esau tries to do what at least appears to be right. Esau adds one more wife to his collection, and this one is a descendant of Abraham. Esau wants a wife that his parents can approve of. Verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. Jacob left with nothing, nothing but a shepherd's staff and enough provisions to make it to the next settlement. 11. And he came to a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And this certain place was about 40 miles from home. And 40 miles on a camel in one day is making good time. And Jacob rested at sundown. And he used a rock for a pillow. And I can tell you this, 
It doesn't surprise me that he went 40 miles on the back of a camel in one day. Like I said, that was tough traveling. And to go 40 miles is a big job. Remember, he's running from Esau, his brother who wants to kill him. That was pretty good motivation. It's surprising how good fear, how, how good a motivation fear is. God uses it. That's why he talks about hell more than he does heaven. Jesus did. So he talks about judgment more than anything, more than anyone, more than all people combined. Jesus talked about it. 12. And he dreamed, and behold, the ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. God sends his good angels on missions to earth. That's one of their purposes for being, to be his ministers. So he sends his good angels on missions to earth. And this stairway full of angels that Jacob saw is God's way of showing us that there is a constant flow of angels between heaven and earth. They're sent by God, they do their job, and then they return to God. And they report, we know that, from the book of Job. 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land wherein thou liest. To thee will I give it and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And this had to be a major encouragement to Jacob, I would think. And now, because God said this, remember Jacob's out there in the middle of the wilderness. He doesn't have to worry about wild beasts, which he was probably thinking about. He didn't have to worry about his brother Esau killing them. He didn't have to worry about robbers killing him on this journey, which was not unusual. And his goal of finding a wife is obviously going to be accomplished, all because of what God says here. This is an encouragement because God is telling him of all the descendants which he will have. And you can't have descendants if you don't find a wife or if you die on your way to destination to find that wife. So from this one promise from God that he would have many descendants and they would, they would indwell that land, Jacob knew this whole works, everything. There was nothing to be afraid of and he would be successful. Now, he didn't know the road that would get him there, but he's going to get there nevertheless. 15. And behold... I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places to which thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. God promises to keep Jacob wherever he goes, and to bring him back to the land which he is now in, the promised land. 16, and Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, and he said, surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not. Well, Jacob knew all along that God was everywhere. The ever, every, ever present God is the God that he worshiped. However, Jacob was not aware of God's presence personally until this dream gave him a spiritual jolt. He knew in his head that God was everywhere. He knew in his head that God was with him. But this dream was a revelation from God, the word of God. And that's how you can enter into the presence of God in a practical way, where he's not just in your mind, but he's in your soul. And Jacob is now living in the awareness of God's presence. So Jacob knows deep down, that God is with him. And the more time we spend in the word of God, 
You see, the more we will be aware of his presence and we'll live in the reality of that, and that knowledge will affect us in many ways. It'll give us peace. It'll give us joy, even when circumstances are not good. And just the happiness that comes from knowing that you're in fellowship with God. There's nothing that can beat that. There isn't a sin in the world worth committing that will steal that. So with that, I'm going to stop today. We'll pick it up right here next time. And if you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can by praying for me and praying for the Word of God. And also when you take a break from studying at the thebibleversebyverse.com, if you would go to the front page and click the Donate button there and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. And so until next time, this is Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long. <music>